I know what you're thinking. Dave, how did you get so damn wide? Hopefully you're thinking that about the vlogging angle we have, rather than my lockdown-related weight gain, because sadly both would be valid. Now, maybe you're also thinking, Dave, you're looking very stable, more than many world leaders in 2020. Well, if you are enjoying this wide angle of view and super steady footage, I'm going to show you how you can achieve the same thing with a kick-ass vlog setup for the Sony ZV-1 right now. So, that vlog combines two things we've discussed before on the channel and which a few of you guys have asked about in the comments. The Zome wide-angle lens and the Xeon Crane M2 gimbal. People say the ZV-1 has two major flaws for vlogging. Number one, a viewing angle that isn't wide enough. And number two, image stabilization, which is good rather than great. Much like social distancing has mitigated my two major flaws of pointing and staring at people for long periods and of course hiding my hideous features, we are going to mitigate the two major flaws of the Sony ZV-1. I made a video about this Zome wide angle lens, which will take you through the basics, including how to attach it to the ZV-1 and lots of test footage. Plus I made a step-by-step -step walkthrough on how to balance the ZV-1 on this Xeon Crane M2 gimbal. Both of those videos are linked in the description. I'm not going to reiterate all the same detail, instead we're going to focus on tips on getting the best out of that combined setup and showing you lots of test footage of how it looks in action. The principles of balancing this setup are exactly the same as in the how to set up the ZV-1 with the Crane M2 gimbal video. We have three axes to balance, each with a color-coded thumb screw to adjust, red for the roll axis, black and gold for the tilt axis, and black for the pan axis. Now we come to balance, make sure that your ZV-1 is turned on so the built-in lens is fully extended. Also make sure the wide angle lens is attached so the camera shape and weight distribution is the same when you balance as it will be while you're shooting. Then it's the usual process of balancing one axis at a time before going back for micro adjustments until you can balance the ZV-1 setup facing upwards. You can then power on the gimbal and boom, awesome setup, ready to go. So, why is this setup so good? First, you can get a super wide viewing angle, far more than the ZV-1 can achieve on its own or even with a decent sized selfie stick. And if you want to get a closer or different viewing angle, it's as easy as pulling in your arm from being fully extended or experimenting with the tilt of the gimbal until you get the shot you like. Plus, you're going to get great stabilization, way better than anything the ZV-1 can offer. If we look at some examples, we can see the big improvement to both field of view and stability. If this were an action movie, it's like upgrading from Steven Seagal to Arnold Schwarzenegger. Stabilization from the Xeon gimbal is way better than the active steady shot built into the ZV-1, and even beats Catalyst Brows, the gyroscopic stabilization that you can use on ZV-1 footage in post. If you don't know what Catalyst Brows is, I recommend you check the video linked in the description for one of the ZV-1's best free features. You get bonus benefits with your gimbal, like the various shooting modes that can give your vlogs and B-roll extra new dimensions. Plus, this little port on the gimbal allows you to charge the ZV-1 while you're shooting, thereby mitigating one of the ZV-1's only other big drawbacks, the short battery life. The wide-angle lens brings its own bonus benefits through a slight distortion around the edge of the image, which can really enhance the beautiful blurry background bokeh when you're vlogging. Plus, the wide field of view captures more of your surroundings for great landscape shots. Before we talk about drawbacks and some practical tips to get the best out of this setup, Thanks so much for watching so far. If the video ends up being helpful or enjoyable, then please consider a like, subscribe, or share. And of course, let me know your questions and thoughts in the comments. Thank you. How about drawbacks? Just like Batman gets to be a badass billionaire genius, he still has the whole dead parents thing and the ridiculous voice. So nothing is perfect. Here, the main issue is price. It's gonna cost you somewhere between 200 and 250 pounds or dollars to get the gimbal and the wide angle lens. And that's a significant investment, as those pigeons will agree. So why do I think it's worth it? Well, you're getting a huge amount of extra capability for that investment. The gimbal lets you get unique shots that you simply can't otherwise, and the wide angle lens is just super useful. Plus, the gimbal works with smartphones, action cameras, other compact cameras like the ZV-1, and lighter mirrorless camera setups. So I know I'm going to get more than my money's worth for that investment. Was that dramatic? I'm pretty sure the people walking past me thought so. Damn cool. Drawback number two is portability. Now, this whole setup is still very compact and light. I would guesstimate maybe 800 grams. Let's see how close I get. But there's no getting away from the fact that it is bigger and heavier than the ZV-1 on its own, which will fit in a pocket and weighs less than 300 grams. 
So while it's very manageable and it's going to easily fit into most bags, it's something to bear in mind. Last and most definitely least on our list of drawbacks is the fact that you need to remember to charge the gimbal. Forget to do that and your setup won't work. So you're introducing another point of failure. Now, I think this is easily mitigated by the fact that battery life is really good, easily meeting the seven hours of continuous shooting that Zion Quo in my experience. Plus battery retention is great with charge being kept for weeks at a time in between uses. And the fact that you need to remember to charge the ZV-1 pretty frequently because battery life there, it ain't so hot. So remembering to charge the battery is one obvious tip. How about some others? Other tips you say? Well, okay then. Number one, if you use a shotgun mic or even a small wireless transmitter like this Rode one that I like to use, you may well find that your setup catches on the roll axis of the gimbal, so you can't balance normally. I found the setup with the wireless transmitter would still work just fine, provided you balance as close as you can and then set motor strength on the gimbal to high, but I couldn't get the shotgun mic setup to work at all. So I recommend recording external audio where possible or failing that keeping your setup as light and small as you can. Tip two, I also recommend using the legs of the gimbal to extend your grip and then controlling your shot from widest to tightest by tilting the setup to your liking. I also recommend using standard steady shot rather than active steady shot in the ZV-1. You definitely don't need active stabilization because the gimbal is gonna make everything super smooth and active crops into the image a little bit, giving you less control over how wide or tight your shots are. Tip three, you can balance this setup with the ZV-1 screen tucked in or flipped out I recommend balancing with it flipped out because then you can easily rotate the screen to switch between vlogging and b-roll shots. Lastly, tip four, I recommend using the gimbal in the default pan follow mode for great smooth results. You can easily follow yourself or create nice moving shots with a little flick of the wrist. So, conclusion time. Is this the ultimate setup for the ZV-1 and maybe even for vlogging in general? I think it could be. It fixes all of the three biggest problems with the ZV-1 wide angle of view, super stable footage, and you can even charge the anemic ZV-1 battery from the gimbal. So that is a win on all fronts. The only thing which might change that consideration is how much you care about the only two real drawbacks of this setup. One is audio mounting, which I think is easy to mitigate by recording externally, but if you really care about using a particular shotgun mic, for instance, this might not be the setup for you. And two is price. The ZV-1 already isn't the cheapest vlogging option out there, and you're adding an extra 200 to 250 pounds or dollars to complete this setup, which is a lot. However, for me, the features, the quality, and the overall user experience of this is pretty damn hard to beat. Let me know what you think in the comments. And that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching and especially for making it all the way to the end. If you liked what you saw, then a like, subscribe, and share would be amazing, and I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. So. Until next time, take it easy.